So here are IS Entity Water today, uh, the women recipients of um, our IS Entity Water uh, Award for Technology and within that the segment on data and that's given to Donald J. Brooks of Initiative O. Um, Donald, thank you very much for being to be interviewed. Oh, of course. Um, we picked up a lot from your presentation. Um, one of the things that we really felt was very, very interesting was the potential to empower the end user in terms of a potential utility company or you know um, potential user of your technology to, to understand clean water delivery. How is your system, Mobile Wash, Wash Mobile, doing this? The two target groups that we're looking to reach are ultimately the end users, the individuals living in communities collecting water from sources, um, as well as the institutions, the organizations, and the utilities that provide water to these individuals. Um, and so the reason for targeting both is that we think we can enact uh, and empower change um, slightly differently for each target. So when looking at the individuals, um, as I mentioned in my talk, water infrastructure in developing urban centers is highly heterogeneous, meaning that it's not always clear who's responsible for maintaining water quality. And so by targeting this data to the individuals actually using and drinking this water, um, we can ensure that we can bypass this confusion and make sure that these individuals know that this water is potentially uh, dangerous to drink, um, you should potentially seek uh, other sources. Um, and so in that way, we can uh, kind of uh, throw aside this confusion um, and in this way still make um, demonstrable change. And the reason for targeting kind of the second demographic, the institutions, organizations, and utilities, is really so that we can, from a top-down approach, um, also work to ameliorate the current wash situation, um, which is this very uncertain, confused type atmosphere in which so many people find themselves collecting their drinking water. And so by using this data and establishing strategic partnerships with these organizations, we can highlight the specific regions um, and times of the year during which water quality is the poorest um, so that this data can be used by these institutions to inform um, and develop uh, strategic implementation plans for further WASH investment and WASH infrastructure investment, um, as well as public health bodies and public health organizations looking to target campaigns such as hand washing campaigns and water treatment campaigns to the areas that are the most affected by poor water quality. From the measurements, from the measures used to, in terms of diagnostic measures of water quality, which ones have you chosen? So we use um, three different tests, and so the metrics we use are E. coli coliforms, uh, total coliforms, and turbidity. Um, and so those are measured by the 3E, excuse me, the 3M Petri film, which is um, an enumeration assay for figuring out exactly how many total and E. coli coliforms are in a sample. Um, as well as the call alert um, test from IDEX laboratories um, that is presence absence for both E. coli and total coliforms again. Um, we decided to include turbidity as an additional indicator um, given that those, the prior two are uh, bacterial and fecal indicators, um, whereas we wanted one that was also kind of an indicator of physical contamination. Um, and so the good thing about Wash Mobile though is that it is expandable in that um, if, for instance, in a region it is known that arsenic poses a significant problem to water supply, um, we could add that in as well, um, which is something that we had considered for a potential um, project in Ghana yeah. um, w where um, arsenic poses a significant problem. Yeah, when arsenic, you were at Fosai in Bihar State in India, right? Um, and that's been massively looked at mm -hmm. in terms of the um, manifestation of immunity by the parasite to antimony-based mm -hmm. drugs with mm -hmm. arsenic in the water table. Right. A lot of this is coming down to mining effluent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and the waste products from the mining industry. In terms of strategic partnerships, would that be a potential target for, for someone like the Department of the Mining um, Company in an endemic region? Uh, in terms of water quality, their corporate social responsibility departments, because they do a lot of work in TV, right. in um, public awareness or health awareness, campaigning for their workers mm -hmm. um, and the regions <coughs> as a whole, would you be looking at strategic partners and mining companies? 
Yes, most certainly, um, especially in the context of Burkina, um, where uh, extractive industries like um, gold mining and, and others um, are particularly prevalent. Um, we would most certainly look to establish strategic partnerships with organizations like mining companies, um, as well as those engaged in um, kind of water quality test production, um, others engaged in industrial activities that um, have some relevance to uh, the environment and environmental impact. Um, and so in terms of the partnerships we'd be looking for with that, I mean, we're very open um, to, um, to collaboration. That's fantastic. That's very good to hear because you see a very wide array or spectrum of stakeholder here in today's meeting. Definitely. It's not just the usual funding agencies or big NGOs. There's quite a lot of different technology groups right. from the small one-man band to the you know, larger kind of um, Know, funded um, <coughs> tech approaches. So we're all about progress to partnership. Is there anybody here in particular that has caught your eye or any kind of, you know, step towards um, collaboration that you've seen here? Um, in terms of uh, presentations, um, I don't know if there are any presentations off the top of my head, but in terms of people that I've met with kind of in the informal portions of the conference, um, PwC would be an interesting partnership um, and I really enjoyed my conversation with their delegate, um, as well as Coca-Cola. And so we had previously reached out to them um, a while ago, um, but we would be interested in resuming um, relations with them to see if um, there was some way that we could work together, especially given the role that water plays in Coca-Cola's activities and in their CSR portfolio. Um, and given now that water quality is just beginning to, I guess, enter the conscience of, uh, or the consciousness of um, funding individuals and funding organizations um, with uh, target three of uh, the water SDG, um, this could be something that uh, could represent a very viable and, and sustainable um, foray into a new kind of CSR area. Fantastic. There's plenty of scope to do that um, in. Uh, coming to the data uh, in, uh, for a second, we hear again and again the rhetoric about breaking down silos, we're all in this together, the last steps towards eradication, the, mm. the last few steps, are really going to have to be uh, you know, taken with everybody on board. But one of the key areas for providing cohesion between different working groups is going to be that data share. Mm. So we're very interested in meeting people who, whether it's their technology or whether it's a framework they're building, it's throwing up data right. Right, that other people can use. How do you see the future of your initiative, your technology, and that particular question of data share? Definitely, yeah. And so this is something that we've considered pretty heavily because um, data without uh, kind of action from this data is useless. Um, and so we kind of throughout the entire development of the program wanted to make sure that our data was actually usable and had demonstrable impact on um, improving health metrics. Um, and so a couple of partnerships um, or a couple of methods that we've gone about doing this is making it publicly available so you can access it readily on our website. Um, as well, um, we publish all of our data to um, the WaterPoint Data Exchange, um, which is a collaborative working group um, led by kind of WaterPoint functionality organizations in the, in the field. Um, they don't have uh, water quality functionality as of yet, um, but that's something that um, they're investigating expanding. Um, as well, we make our data available on WorldMap through um, Harvard University. Um, so it's really, we are looking for avenues to make this and to include this in various other databases. Um, and so that's kind of how we're approaching actually contributing this to, whether it's a larger body, we're not saying that we need to be the larger body and, and the aggregator of all this information, but we view what we're doing and, and the data we're collecting as a um, large, robust component of what could um, become kind of a, a synthesis of global water quality data. It's fantastic and very encouraging to hear in terms of the openness for that direction. And that's certainly a direction that a lot of people are going to, or it's certainly some kind of you know, bottleneck that people are going to you know, encounter right. in the near future. So it's very good to hear the thought leaders of tomorrow, yourself, uh, talking about this. So that, that's fantastic for that. How have you found ISN? You've made a long trip from the States to here. How have you found ISN water so far? 
I, so far, have uh, very much enjoyed it. Uh, it started last night with the London Loo Tour, which was hilariously bizarre, but fit um, perfectly with um, the theme of the conference. Um, today, so far, I mean, I've been engaged with all of the speakers. Um, the kind of informal portions are also excellent times to network with coworkers, or excuse me, colleagues. Um, and I really enjoy the uh, kind of the focus on making sure that partnerships and yeah. concrete partnerships um, develop as a result of the meetings that are happening today yeah. and the presentations that are happening today. And so as a, uh, an NGO that's growing, this is very useful kind of in um, pushing us in the right direction and, and is useful in terms of um, growing our connection network um, in the field more broadly. Uh, I really appreciate that answer. These days are made all the more special by people such as yourselves. We're honoured to give you that um, award. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much for submitting and, 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 and coming here. We wish you for all the very best in the future. Thank you so much. Okay.